Welcome back to the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. It's the Mini GP 70 class up next, and the man that's bringing all the heat to Casey O'Gorman in this class joins me. It's uh, Evan Belford. Now, Evan, two wins last time out of the three. Glanny Gorse Park, I know Sunday was quite difficult. We, we filmed on the Saturday, better conditions then. The Sunday conditions, uh, very, very wet, I understand it. Does that suit you? Well, yeah, because I'm kind of a wet rider. like. I'm smooth and it just suits me for some reason. So uh, two wins out of the three. First time that Casey's lost twice during the weekend. Um, can you do it this weekend though? Wilton Mill, is this a track you enjoy? It's not really that one that I enjoy, but it's because it's really bumpy, but I try my best. Okay, who do you want to thank for your success last time? I'd like to thank MJW Motorcycles. Um, for helping me with my motorcycle, with my bike, RNG, m and Monkey Fresh. Okay, well, good luck this weekend. Thank you. Well, two wins last time. Let's see how Evan gets on this time in Mini GP70. Casey O'Gorman it is who will have pole position. He's looking for the championship this weekend. One podium, 16 race wins. Evan Belford comes next, the 10-year-old from Warwickshire. In his best performance at Cool Fab so far, Rossi Bannum goes off P3, the 13-year-old from Southampton. Bailey Stewart Campbell comes next with 12 podiums to his name. The nine-year-old from Wokingham, then Finn Smart with a podium this year. He goes off P5. Off P6, it's Owen Meller, the man from Blythe with a podium to his name this year. Off P7, it's uh, Ollie Walker. The Terminator riding the 48 bike. Then off P8, it's Kyle Payne, 10 years of age from Thatcham, riding the 25 bike. Sean Abel comes next, riding the 330 machine. 11 years of age from Wiltshire, with two podiums this year. James Rose Jr. has a podium to his name, riding the 8 bike off P10. Off P11, it's Jack Kirsch, riding the 96 bike. 11 years of age from Gloucester. On P12 for SRS International, it's Saffron Watley riding the 178 bike. Taylor Lawrence comes next off P13, 14 years of age from Gloucester. Off P15, it's Corey Stainer making a reappearance, the 10-year-old from Swindon. Then Holly Harris going off P15 and rounding out the grid, it's Elliot Crosby riding the 92 bike, the 15-year-old from Ashford. Jake. It's judgment day for Casey O'Gorman. He could be about to wrap up his third 2018 title. Here we go, Evan Belford's gonna be there to stop him. Rossi Bannon threw in a third position. A nice start from him off that third place spot on the grid as the riders make their way through Oblivion and Crook. Up fine lady, Belford already being challenged by Rossi Bannon. Bailey Stewart Campbell round to the far left, trying to come through as well. But out in front again, Casey O'Gorman has just leapt into the lead of this race. The 10-year-old just charging his way ahead of the rest of the field. How does he do it? Where is that talent from? It's remarkable, it really is. But uh, he's ahead of uh, Evan Belford, who won two races last time. Rossi Bannon, by the way, as Bailey Stewart Campbell makes a move on Finn Smart. Rossi Bannon in his best position. Look at this, third place, qualified P3. He's in third now. This is the best we've seen of him. Great to see the riders progressing and Rossi having a stellar weekend. Well, Finn Smart initially, initially got the jump on uh, Bailey Stewart Campbell, but Bailey has got him back again halfway round that lap. There they are, battling for fourth position, these two. Stuart Campbell and Smart, then it's Meller, Abel, Rose, Payne, Walker, Corey Stainer, Jack Kirsch and Saffron Watley from Harris, Lawrence and Crosby. Everybody's still running at the moment, although this is a high attrition class, of course, Mini GP70. We've seen a few times over the course of the season, riders will have issues, mechanical difficulties, but hopefully all 16 of them are going to make the flag this time. Meanwhile, O'Gorman out in front, seven tenths of a second. It's not as massive a gap as it was in Mini Moto Elite, but I tell you what, Casey O'Gorman on the brink of becoming the first rider, and as far as I'm aware, the first rider in British history to win three Cool Fab titles in the same season. Well, certainly nobody's ever won three titles. He won the Mini GP50 with two races to go, two rounds to go, I beg your pardon. And he could, as you say, Jake, tie up the Mini GP70 class here. 
with one round to go. So three championships with at least one round to go. That's James Rose on the inside of Owen Meller. He dives into Christmas, gets the place. That's nicely done there from Rose. So uh, that puts him up into the top six, battling away to try and get away from the likes of Sean Abel and Ollie Walker behind them. Carl Payne in the top 10 there as well in front of Corey Stainer. A very nice move from James Rose to put him top six. Can he now gain on Bailey Stewart Campbell and Finn Smart? He's got plenty of time to do it. Whether he's got pace is a very different question. Now, a bit of a twitch there under breaking for Bailey Stewart Campbell as he runs in the top four. That looks like Ollie Walker just holding off Kyle Payne for the moment, but it's very tight. He's trying to defend from Kyle Payne while also attack Sean Abel. And there's not a lot of room for negotiation on this particular circuit. It's very tight, very twisty. You've got to know you've got that overtaking move in you with plenty of time to get it done and not have to worry too much about the exit if you're going to go for the bold move. But he's got a great run out of Manuel's bank. Fine lady, and look at that, not even before the braking zone, he's got that one done. So, yeah, so Ollie Walker there on the 48 bike, up the inside of Sean Abel. That's the battle for this, well, this is the battle for eighth place. So it's Walker, Abel, and uh, Carl Payne there rounding out the top 10. This is a battle for eighth, ninth, and 10th. Go left-handed now, down to this uh, uh, hairpin here. Uh, that is the uh, bike of uh, James Rose, the white bike with Meller in behind. The, uh, the name of that hairpin's changed, Jake Chapman. Yes, uh, we've always known it as Chapman. Oh, and down! That's Rose! Rose is down in the boot. He's lost that on his own, having just got past Meller. Rose has done it on his own. Let's look again. Just look. lost the front end, yeah, just slid away. Low so side. easy to do. Unfortunately, that is James Rose having lost it on his own. What a shame. Such a brilliant overtaking move before that as Carl Payne now dives on the inside of Sean Abel and gets the place in a very similar fashion to the way that James Rose got past Owen Meller initially. But unfortunate that is for James Rose. Hopefully he can get the bike going again and at least bring it to the flag. But that was such a good ride up until that point. We were talking, weren't we, about that hairpin there that used to be, as we know it, Chapman's, now known as Ozier's for uh, this season onwards. Not entirely sure what's prompted the change. I was going to say, <laughs> I don't even understand that at all. But I anyway. think it's to do with a new member of staff at Wilton Mill or something along those lines. But there's not many corners. We'll go through this one. Not many corners with the uh, grace and beauty of name as Christmas. And he's just gone through the hairpin there, up past Inkermans, and then up to Ashby. Most of the names of the corners on this particular circuit, of course, named after people who have been synonymous with Wilton Mill over the years. That's how they get their names. So through Wilkins and up to Osiers, which is the new one. Not entirely sure why that uh, has been changed. This is a battle for second place. Belford with Rossi Bannum on the 13, holding on to him. What a ride this is by Rossi Bannum, by the way. Left-handed now through the boot. That was the ankle. This is the toe of the boot. If you see this from above, you'll realise why this is called the boot. That is the heel, and it goes through the line. Belford, who's uh, one of the top runners in the championship, being hounded by Rossi Bannum. Yeah, this is definitely Rossi Bannum's breakthrough weekend, isn't it? He's been very no quick all no weekend. Doubt. He's had flashes of brilliance towards the top six, and he's always shown that if he continues that developmental pace, he will get there. But right now, here today, he's there. Yeah, this he's is absolute be, conviction. It's going to be huge for his confidence, no doubt about it. And, and he's so, got Belford worried. Look yeah, at that. He's looking over his shoulder, thinking, where are you? Through Ashby's, that's very brave to look over your shoulders there. He clearly thinks that Bannum could be a thorn in the side in the 13. Riding absolutely beautifully here at Wilton Mill. He's doing a fantastic job. And uh, this is hopefully a sign of things to come in 2019. If he can keep up this sort of development, he could step up the pace for 2019. And we could see young Rossi Bannum charging for the title in 2019. I'd love to see what he can do. Yeah, and you've got riders behind him with a lot more experience. Bailey Stewart Campbell, for example. There he was in the background. Bailey Stewart Campbell, Walker, Payne, Sean Abel, all arguably more experienced than Rossi yep. Bannum so he's having a great weekend here the uh, young man on the 13 bike well some riders just take to it without much time at all they just get the natural flow and Rossi Bannum in the last few meetings seems to have been able to get himself into that natural flow quicker than some of the others he seems to be very comfortable in his mode at the moment he's so much in charge of himself but this man in particular well there are no more superlatives to give him are there it's Casey O'Gorman out in front looking to seal his third title of the 2018 season after winning mini gp50 a weekend ago at the last round uh, then also of course wrapping up the mini moto elite 
in the previous class. Would he even go to Tatashul if he's won all three titles? Would he even turn up? Well, if it was me, I'd probably, and I was his dad, I'd probably say, you know what, I save the money and give everybody else a chance to uh, have their little bit of fame that weekend. But knowing Casey, as I do, there's no way if his dad says, shall we go, Casey, or not bother? I think <laughs> Casey will say, no, let's go, Dad. Yeah, you know, I Let's race go. all three classes, I don't mind. Yeah, I want to go. I want to pick up a few more wins. And it's been amazing to watch how he has... Uh, shown that prowess through the season. There is James Rose, by the way, just in behind Belford. Uh, he has got going again, but he is now a lap adrift. So as far as he's concerned, this is now an extended test session. But Evan Belford, look, Evan Belford is not a slow rider. He's one of the best in the country at this level. And Casey O'Gorman, 10 years of age, has extended the gap to 3.2 in mini GP 70s. Absolutely astonishing. It is incredible. It is a great talent, as indeed is Evan Belfond and Bailey Stewart, Campbell, plenty of others in in these uh, this, this class as well will come to the fore over the next few years. I'm not sure with um, Casey, still only 10, so 11 next year. He won't be moving forward to the British Talent Cup or anything else next year. It's I'm another sure. year I mean, of dominance. I think, he's got, <laughs> I think I don't think he can do that until he's 12. I think I'm right in saying that. I might be wrong. If I am wrong, then point it out, guys, well, in the comments. I tell you but, what, uh, that's going to worry the cool family for next year, isn't well, it? Because that could be yeah. another year of straight but, dominance. But I've got to be honest, though, if I'm one of these other kids, I want him to be there because you want to race against the best. Because when you're racing against great people, you get better. It's as simple as that. Well, case in point, Rossi Bannon, he's up against the best in the country at this sort of sport, and he is in the top three on merit, not by luck, not by chance. He's done his homework. He is absolutely on fire here at Wilton Mill, and hopefully he'll be able to keep that sort of pace ready for Tattershall. Great performance, there's no doubt about it. Right, this is Kirsch, Stainer and Watley. They are scrapping away, and if you look back, there is going to be Casey O'Gorman, I think. He's getting closer enough to these guys who are scrapping away. They're about to start their penultimate lap. Kirsch, Stainer and Watley. The next one up the road is going to be Casey O'Gorman to start his uh, last lap of the race. Yeah, so this is the last lap. Jack Kirsch, by the way, Jake, doing well to stay in front of Corey Stainer and Saffron Watley because I think they've got a lot more experience than he has. Well, Casey O'Gorman is on an amazing mission, isn't he? 4.1 seconds ahead of Belford. And on that last lap, he is on course to win his third championship of 2018. There has yet to be an Irish MotoGP champion. The last 500cc motorcycle Grand Prix winner was in the West German Grand Prix in 1956. Reg Armstrong, 62 years ago. We may have found our ultimate talent from Ireland to go all the way to the top spot. Only three riders have ever won at elite level in Motorcycle Grand Prix. Manlith Barrington, Artie Bell and Reg Armstrong. Is Casey O'Gorman set to be the fourth? He's done an absolutely incredible job in 2018. He knits his way up the inside of Taylor Lawrence to lap him. He comes through, takes the victory, and he is on course to dominate his 2018 campaign. Belford did well there to stay within three seconds. Rossi, Bannum, what a ride in third against some of the best in the country. He can now say, I am one of the best in the country. He's at that level now. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's a great weekend for Rossi Bannum. Great weekend for Casey O'Gorman, uh, as, as we'll see when we look at the final results. That's uh, Walker going through the line. In front of Meller and Payne, so he fought his way back to the top six. Great ride there from Walker. But Casey O'Gorman finishing his 2018 season in these last two weekends in style. A win to start us off in Wilton Mill. Could he be beaten? No chance. This is Casey O'Gorman in 2018 fighting form. In Mini GP70, he would go on to win races two and three. A record-breaking season. Three campaigns and three British championships. Second and third are settled for Belford and Stuart Campbell, but Abel and Bannon will be worth a watch at Tadishal. There's only a point between them. We'll finish up with Mini Moto Pro next up.